Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Lead, Sell, Grow, the Human Experience Podcast. I have an amazing guest today. My good friend, Raj Kapoor, is a wealth mindset expert and a success coach. Raj has leveraged proven leadership methods to develop super leaders that transformed not only themselves and their teams, but also their entire organizations. Raj has two programs. His program, Guidance to Wealth, has helped people become financially stress-free, and his other program is geared towards coaching and consultants. It's Guidance to Wealth for Coaches and Consultants, the Millionaire Path has helped coaches go from five to seven figure earnings. Raj is a radio show host. He's a sought after speaker, online educator, and a consultant for top leaders. He's also the co-author of the book, The Successful Mind. Raj, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, for having me on the show. I wouldn't be anywhere else, but with you. Oh, man. <laughs> Knowing it's... how you have progressed and how we have known each other for quite some time is just uh, amazing. We have. Now, you you came up in the world, like you, you're, you've you been a C-level executive forever. I mean, you were a CFO and mm-hmm. your whole job when I first met you was to go into these big nonprofit organizations around DC and just help them turn around their finances. Correct. And then what happened after that? So I had been doing that for quite some time and that became sort of my expertise, but also always there was something more that I felt that I could do. And that is when, so actually it started in 2014, if I can start with that, because that is the year when as a chief financial officer, I was very happy behind the desk. Okay. It was a job. Yes. I was fully immersed in it to create changes because nonprofits were very close to me and still close to me. And I still worked with them. Uh, But the main thing was that they are doing such good work. So for me to help, to do whatever I could was not only challenging, but very fruitful. But always there was something, there is something more, something more. So 2014, actually, I said, this year I'm going to either study, watch a video or listen to an audio on self-development every day. I have been working on self-development forever. That has been something which I always love doing. And so that is what gave me a growth path. But this was like very intentional. And so that year, what I did was not only did I decide that, but one thing which I have never done, I made it public. I put it on my Facebook. I told my friends. And then I started a website called Experiments with Success. And I said, let me blog whatever I'm going to learn from these and whatever is good, which I feel could be shared with other people, let me do that. Now, obviously, as you know, when you set goals in the beginning of the year, very soon enough, you find that life hits you. And I was like in the same place, what did I do? (laughs) Because, but now that I had accountability because I had already put it out there and people were asking me, Raj, how is it going? So even though after a very hard day, when I came back, I said, let me pour into myself. That is when things started opening up for me. I joined Darren Hardy's programs to the point where I was creating my mind maps and Darren said, Raj, you have already reached where most people want to reach. Then I uh, got a call from the John Maxwell team uh, in August, I still remember. And that is when I joined the John Maxwell team. And that year just kept on opening up different doors for me to step into a different role to come out to become a speaker. I was never a speaker before. He would be, I was content, but this was something. And that is when this level in me came in that I have to reach a different level. I have to bring my message to to the world. And one of the reasons that came about, and this was during the time I was with nonprofits, you just told me about the courses I created. And the reason I created that was because at that juncture, Many people came to me. Uh, it was a pretty uh, affluent place where this nonprofit was. And these people were asking for extensions. They were asking for uh, maybe reduction in their payment for their children, fees and everything. And being a chief financial officer, looking at everything in depth, I was wondering what was going on here. And once I started looking at them, I said, these people are making 200, 300, 400 plus thousand dollars. What's wrong here? And that's when I started delving into it and talking to them, found out they didn't have the money mindset. 
they were making money, good money, living in nice places, driving nice cars, but they were spent times in deep credit card debt. Mm. And and obviously nobody tells you that because you are competing with Joneses all the time, most of the people. And so that is what started bringing out my program, which actually had come about many years ago when I was literally on the verge of bankruptcy. And I said, I'm not going to file for bankruptcy. And I didn't. And I learned these techniques that was in early 1990s. And that is how I was developing my business, businesses across the years while I was a CFO. So lots went on this, as you tell me, so much goes on in my mind. (laughs) Yeah. So what is a wealth mindset? Wealth mindset is actually a mindset where, so there are two mindsets, fixed and growth mindset. Most of the people who are not in the wealth mindset have a fixed mindset, meaning to say they believe that these things are not going to change. This is what was born. It was written for me. This is how it is. Why? Are other people so lucky and me not so lucky? Wealth mindset goes in with abundance. That means it's not just about money. It is about everything in abundance. Your health, your wealth, your family, whatever you're working with, joy, that is abundance. That is what wealth mindset is. Mm -hmm. And wealth mindset is something many people ask me when I'm teaching, can it be developed? Absolutely, it can be developed. I developed it. I came from very humble beginnings. Both my parents were teachers in India. And uh, one of the things which was lacking, I mean, they were great role models, but the lack was the wealth mindset. It was all education, get highly educated, get a good job. And I came to the United States. I said, let me go for my MBA. I finished my MBA with honors and everything. But then that was that feeling in there, something is missing. What is that that was missing? And that was this wealth mindset. And once you develop the wealth mindset, then what I noticed was that you start attracting people, you start attracting money, you start attracting wealth, you start living a life at a different level. And that's when I made it a study for my life. I'm going to study everything. And that's when I started studying and studying and studying. And I I think I might have gone through every guru that is out there and their courses on wealth, money, mindset. I even, uh, this became such intriguing thing for me in the mind that I went and took certification as a hypnotherapist. <laughs> you learn how mindset works. Wow, that is that is pretty crazy. And you know, um, there's still that piece of education. Like I got to tell you, I think I have a wealth mindset in the sense of abundance mindset, in a sense of just positive outlook on the world, trying to, you know, understand that the first thing I need to get to is that feeling of joy to start the day because when my cup is full I can give joy back that's all good but then I started attracting money and I started making good money and there needs to be some kind of a level of education because you can have the wealth mindset and don't have the financial literacy or education and you will not know what to do with that money (laughs) so this is where I actually sort of disagreed with many of the other gurus where they said, develop the wealth mindset and everything will happen for you. And that is what I believe happened when the book Secret came out. Uh Everybody was like, oh my God, just think and you'll become rich. And few people did. So it became a big thing, but not everybody did. And the reason behind it was very clear is that with the wealth mindset, you do need the techniques. You do need to take action. You do need to do the work. It automatically would not happen. And that was the reason I created my program, Guidance to Wealth. Because what I noticed, uh, Eric, was that out there, some people were teaching about generation of wealth. Some were talking about saving. Some were talking about growing your wealth. Then there were people who were talking about protection of wealth. Uh, Some were talking just about wealth habits, wealth mindset, all dispersed, but couldn't find anything under one place where everything was there. So that was the reason I started creating my program and coaching people. That's how it all came about. So the program then encompassed everything, starting from the wealth mindset to learning the techniques, knowing what saving is, how to save, not only just knowing, but how, what are the techniques? And I still remember I was talking to somebody 
in Kenya. I said, I'm giving some free calls. And this lady called me. She says, I've been hearing you. I have been talking uh, about with my family, but you don't understand. I'm in that position where I don't have a penny. We are a large family. We don't make anything. I don't see anything out there uh, with the savings, what you tell me. And I'm just talking about one aspect now instead of the others. And I said, what I tell is generally, which is an old saying, save 10%. Everybody knows it. Very few do it. Okay. <laughs> specific. And she was like, 10%? I can't even think of 10%. I said, can you say 1%? And she paused. She said, 1% is doable. I said, start with that. Just go with that. Your mindset starts shifting here because it tells you that there is some money there which will help you when there is a problem or something. It will start shifting. She mm -hmm. called me after two months on one of the calls I was at. I was doing the call and, he, and she actually pitched in and called and she says, Raj, you remember? I said, yes. She goes, now I'm seeing the end of the tunnel. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Thank Starting you for with 1%. Just with 1%. Yeah, that's great. So let me ask you. Shift why, the mindset, man. Why thought, save? Um, and I hear you, it definitely changes the mindset. So I kind of piecemealed it from a bunch of different people. So I took a little bit of Dave Ramsey's of having your emergency fund. I like the idea of having just six months worth of, you know, if something happens, we lose all income for six months, we're okay. And I know I'm a smart enough guy to figure out how to make some more in six months, right? So that's in the bank. Okay, great. Uh, I like Robert Kiyosaki's philosophies on OPM and other people's monies and change, you know, but I recently listened to uh, Michael Saylor. He's a, he, you know, just, a, he's a CEO for a pretty huge organization. And he, talking about saving money, he's like, why would you ever want to save something that they can just print that depreciates all the time? <laughs> what's, your, what's your philosophy on that? My philosophy on that is very simple. The answer is that when people who are regular common people like me and you day to day, when we fall into dire circumstances, which does happen to most of us from time to time, specifically with COVID it happened. And then people, I was look, hearing on the news, they don't have money to live two weeks, two mm. weeks they're getting on the street. Now that is the reason you need to save money. It depreciates, understandable, it does. Until and unless you are a very savvy investor and you know how to invest and make a lot of money, you do need the savings. Everybody is not at that level. So everybody is different. Some people will just think in these manners that you don't need to save. And, I, and I'm not disagreeing with that, depending on the place where you're at. Mm -hmm. Let's say somebody is generating millions of dollars and they're investing and they're growing money. They don't want to save money. It makes mm -hmm. sense. Okay, but that is not what is there for everyone. Most of the people are not in that realm or that level even. For them, when hardships start happening, the first thing happens is that they start getting to the credit cards. Second is instant gratification that we are seeing everywhere. It used to be you had hard cash. You used to go, you want to buy some furniture for the home. You said, don't have enough. I'll wait six months save enough and then buy it now with credit cards come on man let's go yeah. and spend i'll make it in six months the reality is very few of the people are able to make it within six months and that is why the credit card companies are getting so wealthy so rich because of the interest that starts living so for a common person i'm talking about saving and that mindset becomes important because now you see that cushion in there Mm -hmm. That is there for me. So you know, if any hardship befalls me, at least I'm safe there. Okay. So take me to, take me through kind of like your steps. So with that woman who was seeing at the end of the tunnel, just by starting to save 1%, what's a progression there? Like what's her next step? Is it save X amount of months, but then yes. where, did, what does she do then? So, so my, the progression, the way I go with it is that you start with 1% and then you keep on upping it to 2%, 3%, 4% until you reach at least 10%, mm -hmm. okay, until. And then you keep on doing that because that's your safety net. 
it doesn't matter whether you grow that money do whatever with that money but that is there as a safety net which will give you that security now again everybody's mindset is different everybody's personality is different and everybody's risk taking is different so it all depends that is why when i do my coaching i do it very much on an individual basis it could be a group but i individually take a look as to where a person is in their cycle of life and money and wealth and then that is how i design everything with them and the main thing happens is with these steps that you are saying so you keep on taking these steps and then the next step is to get off your debts it is what most of the other gurus are saying and i agree with that because that is a lot of pressure on your head mm -hmm. and once you start taking a look and start paying off those debts that's the second step third step is to start taking and investing your money and growing it do you that recommend paying off a excuse me do you recommend paying off a mortgage uh it depends if if it was me answer is yes Hmm. But again, it depends on the circumstances of person, where they are. My answer is, if you have paid it off, <laughs> you are totally debt free. Many people came and argued with me, seriously. They were like, you don't understand the break I get on the taxes, I get this. I said, take a look at your total number of money that you are paying, the interest you are paying. Now, obviously, not everybody is in their position right now to pay off the mortgage. But if you are, my answer would be yes. The money you save from there, invest and grow it. And, and for that also, one of the big advice I say is go and talk to the experts. Mm -hmm. Go and talk to the experts. Do not get into any business or anything which you do not know anything about. That is what happened with me originally in the beginning. Like, it's a short story, but I can just tell you. In early 90s, when I finished my MBA, it was like just, I want to make money. And I started with a nonprofit making very meager amount of money, okay? But the idea was that's why I came here. And that time I met someone who, who was really wealthy in Long Island, New York. He had like a half a million dollar mansion at that time, which was huge. He had Mercedes, like, I mean, it's not Lexus at that time, he had Cadillac, Mercedes, Cadillac and other Jaguars and everything. And he impressed us. He had stores, multiple stores. He impressed me and said, me and my brother. And he said, invest $10,000 with me and I'll easily be able to get 100,000 by the end of the year. Look creative. I didn't have the money. I took everything on credit cards. I invested into a ladies clothing dress business, which I had zero clue about what it is. Long story short, that is the story how my whole life changed was that he was a swindler. That guy had already borrowed money from a lot of people. He was in bankruptcy when he met us, but he didn't tell us that. By the time it was all over, because we had stores in New York City, we opened up stores in Jamaica, Queens, we had in free markets, nothing worked, nothing worked. I was working my job and working on the business with my brother. Brother left his job, really good job to work on the business. Bottom line was, person came and said, if you did, somebody came and told me, Raj, if you didn't know anything about this business, why did you step into it? Answer was that dreams, sort of that greed, I can say, what else is it, right? That can make it. And irrespective, when I finished, I was $50,000 in debt. Mm. And at that time, I went to my friend, he was a CPA. He said, Raj, you better file for bankruptcy. You have no option. And that's when I said, no. I was going back and I stopped at Borders Bookstore. I still remember it so well. I found this book, The Richest Man in Babylon. I, that was the first book I started reading. And once I read, I knew what I had done wrong. I knew where I had gone wrong. And I said, whatever it takes, I'm not going to file for bankruptcy. Even if it takes me the rest of my life. And I started learning. I read every book, everything. And then I developed my own program. Within three years' time, Eric, I was completely debt-free. And at that time, my mindset had changed and everything. So at that time, from then onwards, I have had many businesses. Uh, one of the businesses, while I was in a job, generated a million dollars a year, few years in a row, while I was in a job. Because now I knew who to talk to. I knew who the experts were. And I learned everything as much as I could with the other people I was with, my partners before I ventured into everything. So that's what I would say. Talk wow. to a person who knows it. 
hey, good for you. I mean, you it sounds like you've been through quite a bit. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so why are you focusing on coaches and consultants with uh, the wealth mindset? So one of the reasons I started focusing on the coaches specifically was because I started interviewing coaches. The reason I started interviewing coaches was that when I started looking into this field, and I'm talking about coaches from all different fields, people who are health coaches, wealth coaches, mindset coaches, leadership coaches, all of them. I said, so most of them, it seems, were struggling. Mm -hmm. And uh, they still are struggling, okay? And the and main thing happens is that now, now you got your certifications. Now you got your degrees. Now what? Most of the coaching programs don't teach you the business acumen or the mindset. Okay, you get the situation, you're all gung ho and you go out and then you find dead silence. And that was one of the reasons I said, let me talk to people. There are most of them are in five figure range. But there are a lot of them who have reached six figure, few seven figure and very few eight figures. Why? What's the difference? Is it education? Is it the network? Is it what their knowledge is? What, what is it exactly? That, that some of the people are able to do so much and the others are not. And that's when I said, let me start interviewing. And so I interviewed quite a few coaches just on that and a pattern started emerging. Pattern was very clear. Most of the coaches did not have either the mindset or the business techniques and business acumen. They didn't know how to build a business. They were not business people. They are really good in their art. When they talk to people, they change lives. They're that good. But they now started to have a struggle where they are not able to get many clients or they don't know the business aspects as to how to grow their business, how to increase their business. So that, and, and I would say most of the people I'm coaching and working with, problem is they don't have the money mindset. <laughs> they have those, what we call sort of an imposter syndrome that whatever I'm giving, can I value it? Can I charge them? And so most of them are giving a lot of stuff for free. A lot of them are doing a lot of charitable work. I did that too. Until I said, no, let's stop. Let's see where it is. And, and once I delved into it, that's when I realized that the course that I created, Guidance to Wealth, with the business acumen, business techniques that I used, building Facebook groups, uh, how to reach out to people, building clientele, building a list, uh, how to talk to people, how to do sales, a lot of things. You're in there as, as a sales expert and you are like top notch at it, seriously. Thank you. So, so you know all about it, but how many people do? Not many. And so that is why I said, let's create something which is going to help coaches go from a five figure range. And when I did the research, I think it said, at least when I did it, was that an average coach that coaches are making between 34 to 64 on average. And 64 is the average that a coach makes on an average, which is like, is that a hundred percent like full-time as a coach or is that because a lot of them have a job and then they're, and they're coaching. So that is what came about as people who are doing full-time coaching. Okay. They're still in five figures. Got it. And that is where this, Thing came in where you start with your mindset, understand the wealth habits, create those, understand all the aspects of wealth and money, but then you go and go into all the aspects of how to build your business, really build your business, not just work in it, but work on it as a business owner. What does and that mean? Thinking. What does it mean to work on it and not just in it? Most of the people, and I'm also doing a lot of consulting, by the way, with small businesses, and I just actually, this was last week, I went with someone who runs a spa and she is very good in her massage. So I'll take an example of that. Mm -hmm. Same thing happens with most coaches. So she does it herself. She has some people, but she's spending her time all day doing massages and trying to build a big business where she's doing facial shields, she's built it, but she's always falling short. And I said, the simple reason for falling short is you're working in your business, meaning to say you're working on it every day. How much time do you spend on thinking about increasing your business? What are the most profitable things 
you do facials, you do different kinds of things with machines and everything uh, for weight loss, body scrubs and everything. I said, let's take a look at what is the most beneficial that is going to do the least amount of work, but bring you most amount. Then you teach people your skill because she's also a, a teacher. Let them take care of the people. You become a person who's working on your business. That's the way to grow your business. Mm -hmm. Working in your business, you'll be just working in your business day and night. You'll be tired. Then you start getting old and you said, I don't have the strength to do it, but you are all alone. That's the difference between working in your business and working on your business. So much wisdom in what you said right there. I mean, what, what it reminds me of is an old, old uh, Earl Nightingale kind of speech you can hear on on YouTube now, and it's called Acres of Diamonds, you know, yeah. and he reads it about that farmer who kind of sold his farm in Africa and went to, to find diamonds. And yeah. after he died, they found that, you know, his farm that he sold was like full of diamonds right it there. Yeah. You know, I actually used that principle when I was consulting and coaching uh, organizations that had sales teams. We would literally do this exercise where we would um, on a, on a spreadsheet, write out all the services that they had. And then we'd pick their top, you know, top 10% of their clients that are paying them a lot of money. And we would just check off, go across and check off which services did these clients actually have from you. And then there were so many blank ones left there. And I'm like, look at this yeah. field of diamonds you have. And you're out trying to figure out how to go cold call to somebody that's never heard of you. You want to grow your business, go knock on these doors, go call, have account reviews, go to people who know you, like you, trust you and offer the other services you're offering. And without doing anything else, without hiring more people, they would, what we realized every single time is that their own customers did not know that they offered all those services. Correct. That's so prevalent everywhere. Correct. And that Acres of Diamonds is just so wonderful. Short story. It's beautiful. Yeah, it, it truly is a great one. Okay, so let's get back to that lady. All right, so we talked about um, get out of debt. Then you're talking about financing, but you're also mentioning speak with experts. How do you find or how do you interview experts? Like, have you heard of uh, Impact Theory? Pretty famous podcast. Uh, Tom Bilyeu, I think is his, I, that's, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, but I'm a fan of his show. Like he's just, just really good guests and content. Amazing. Um, and quite often he talks about having a money manager. Like I have a money manager. <laughs> I was like, what, where do you even get one of those? <laughs> My perspective on that is uh, how to get experts. So you take a look at your field, see people who are successful, okay? find people who you want to be. Okay. And, and you, you truly do. tell though, like, I mean, even, even in your experience, when you went to this guy's mansion, he had, you know, he's got his Cadillacs and Mercedes and, he, he was a crook, you know? How can you yeah. tell just by looking at your feed? So you, and you can't tell by looking at it, but this is what I did later on in life as to how to do it. So when I was working in a nonprofit, what I noticed was that this one of the guys who was the chairman of the organization at that time, he was running a very successful business, okay? You could tell. Now, the best part is, you have so much stuff online that you can find anything about anyone very easily on their books. Very now, true. if you just go with most of the people posting what they're doing, I don't believe that because many of them are just telling something. But when you talk to them, and this is why I said, when I did the coach interviews, it came out very clear. Some of the coaches who have been there day and night talking and doing this, uh, and they were like, oh my God, we are doing so well. And people are signing when I talk to them, one-on-one, -on -one. I'm not going to name anything, but they were literally at the point where they didn't know where the next meal is going to come from that bad, some of them. So you can trust that, but you can trust some of the things where you feel that you're seeing a person grow. Next thing is, if you can, this is what I did, uh, because sometimes it could be a place where you have uh, access to the person, so what I did was when I looked at this guy, I saw what he was doing. I went and saw his company, beautiful place, overlooking, like just beautiful. Uh, in, uh, it was in Virginia itself. And then what I did was I asked him, I said, I would love to take you out for lunch because I want your opinion on something that I'm trying to 
create. And I believe you would be a good person to give me an honest feedback. Now at that time, uh, that lunch cost me over hundred dollars. Okay. I took him to one of the finest restaurants in Old Town Alexandria, one of the finest. Uh, Eric, that $100 was worth more than thousands of dollars that I would have paid to other people to get coaching. Because in one hour, because people who are really successful, people who are really, uh, who have made it, most people feel that they are not reachable. The main thing is they are reachable. You have to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. They want to tell people how they became successful. He had a rags to riches story. He came from a very poor background. We would never have known. And, and, and his and my story resonated. His mother was a teacher. He didn't have a father. And he said, Raj, we were so poor that we didn't know where our next meal would come from. And in winters, we didn't even have clothes to wear. And so first thing was his how to get his money and so he delved right into it but i gave him what i wanted we had a lunch which was hour and a half maybe that hour and a half i still have my notes i still have my notes from there that was many years ago now that was actually in two it was just before 2014 when i told you i started making the change i went and talked to him similarly i did that with few other people who i knew were in the field i took them some of them said yes some of them said no you know doesn't happen but that is how you see find the experts spend some money good quality money which is not because in the beginning you might say man if i'm spending 200 bucks on a lunch this is going to be but the answer is that is not a wealth mindset (laughs) exactly 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 and so that is how you start finding those experts who are in that field or call and ask them can i just talk to you interview you for a few minutes and most of them might not say no to you. Yeah. What do you believe about money? I believe money is in abundance. Many times I used to believe that there is scarcity of money in the beginning. Scarcity was because there's only so much to go around. People are taking it all. Where do I get it from? Until I realized that everything in nature, everything in the world is abundant. Okay. You take a look at the nature outside. Everything is in abundance. Spring is coming now. See, everything is growing in abundance. Same thing. Money is energy. You need to be in that sequence where you use this energy. And and I have noticed whenever, whenever I was down, whenever things were off, things turn out right if your mindset is right. Things will pop up. All of a sudden, at one juncture, when I moved over from uh, leaving my job, obviously things started happening and everything was a downward trajectory. And I was like, what happened here? But something happened all of a sudden where something came in. It kept me going, 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 going. And, And so that is the mindset that you need to know that things will happen. Things will happen for right. There is a time for things to happen right. Mm -hmm. You have to be ready for it. Until you're ready, things will not happen. You have to be ready for it. For the, yeah. for the and, and that is where you pour into yourself, invest in yourself, educate yourself, get to the level where you need to be, connect with people, do whatever you can, take massive, massive, massive action and do it before you're ready. The problem I is I think people, I, I think most people listening believe that they have to change the actions that they take to get a different result. I mean, it applies to, you know, when we want to lose weight, for example, we're like, all right, well, I'll just change my diet or I'll start exercising and then I'll get a different result. And then you notice that they'll do it for a little while, but then it goes back to gaining the weight. Yes. And I, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine uh, a couple of weeks ago and he made this comment. He's like, I just want to get ahead. It seems like I can never just get ahead. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking you can't get ahead because of that thought process that you got, (laughs) because you believe it seems like you can never just get ahead and you really want to get ahead. So the universe is keeping you in that state of wanting to get ahead. Yes. And I have it and we all feel it. There's like this energy. It's almost as if like you're pushing on a break, you know, everything's going to find them skirt, like something happens. And nothing's going your way. You just already know something's the next thing will be messed up. And so 
I'll just share with you guys like what I do in that case is you got to go back to gratitude. You got to go back to understand like that's one of those times and I get those once every few months. I'll come in 3.30 in the morning, pop in my little headphones and just start listening to guided meditations and, and remind myself that I am connected to that the greatest source. I am a part of God. I am connected to nature. I'm connected. Everything flows. Energy flows. Everything's energy. It's all flowing to me in abundance. I'm worthy of it. And you would, the gates open up. Yeah, absolutely. No question. I do exactly the same thing. I meditate every single day, whether it's for 10 minutes or 30 minutes, how much of a time I have, I do. And one of the first things I do is gratitude. Now I have this diary here right now that I write in every day, every morning. First thing I wake up, I do go in there and I write down at least three things. There you are. <laughs> what am I grateful for? And gratitude is something which you do from your heart. Mm -hmm. You have to be really thankful. It is not just somebody told you to do it and you're okay, I'm thankful for this, I'm thankful. No, it has to come from within where you're really thankful, even for small things. Just having this beautiful sunlight outside, okay? Thank you got up this morning. Yeah, okay? that's huge. How many people didn't? Yeah, Thank and a lot of, you know, I, I, I used to be one of those people that just didn't understand, couldn't connect the two. Like, so, okay, fine, I'm grateful, but stuff's still not going my way. <laughs> and then I realized that things don't go your way because you're in a state of fear. Yes. You're in a low vibrational frequency and you can't be in that state of fear and anxiety and be grateful at the same Absolute time. So God, you put it perfectly on, you hit it on the nail. You just can't. Yes. So, so yes. becoming grateful isn't so much to, to feel grateful as it is to not, to get rid of all the fear and anxiety and stress. And that's what I found in my life anyway. You're so right. Absolutely. I mean, with the thoughts, I just did a talk actually recently and a video on it about the thoughts uh, everybody has around 30 to 40,000 thoughts a day and they say you have, must have heard it so many people you change your thinking and you change your life and many people I try to change my thinking I don't change my life okay you don't change your life because what are, are the same thoughts that were there yesterday are same here today for most people yes what about a week ago yeah, some people a month ago, some people years ago, some people 10 years ago, because they are still living in 10 years ago's life. Same. They haven't progressed because they're still using the same thought pattern, same mm -hmm. thinking. And until you consciously start changing your thinking, things won't change. And number one thing for this is awareness. Most people are not aware of this. It is your subconscious mind, which is running almost 80 to 90% of your life on a daily basis. What is programmed there? What beliefs you had? They will shift you back. That is why most of the people, you said when they go on diets, they go because they are now gung-ho. That momentum is there a little bit that they go. And soon enough, your mind goes back. What are you doing? That was more comfortable. You are going to be losing out on this stuff. You're going to be losing out on that stuff. And... Boom, 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 boom. Then there's a party and you're like, okay, one time, what's the big deal? And there you are. And your mind shifts back to where you were in that comfort zone. And there you are. One of the things I do really with some of my clients is we go and talk about going from your comfort zone to your dream zone. So this is your comfort zone. This is your dream zone. Dream zone is where you want to reach. Comfort zone is wherever you're right now. You could be very successful. Doesn't matter. But I say this is your comfort zone. What you want to reach is your dream zone. So go through a visualization exercise. I, mean, so I do the whole thing with them. Go through that and see that future. Make that future so real, so real, that if you are a part of it, living that future, once you have seen it, your mind has an image of that. Once your mind has an image of that, then you come back to today. And then that journey that you need to do, you chunk it out depending on months, depending on years, you chunk it out and see how you're going to take the journey from here to here. And that becomes your blueprint for your money, wealth, and rest of your life. That becomes very powerful. Yeah, that is very powerful. Another thing I would add to that is a lot of people will say, well, I'm not visual. I can't see it. 
Okay. And so what's important is getting into the feeling energy of it. Well, how will you feel when you're there, right? Because that kind of puts you on that same frequency. And we do it all the time. Like, think about it. Like, you're going to go out to dinner. And let's say it's a fancy event. You're already thinking about what you're going to wear. Like, women think about what they're going to wear. Sometimes they send you a menu ahead of time to order from. And you know it's 6 p.m., 7 p.m. You're going to be in a nice dress. You're going to be... Oh, I'm, I'm not going to order a steak at that point. I don't want to feel all, you know, bogged down. I'm just going to order a salad and maybe a piece of salmon or something. Like we do it all the time. You're, you're thinking into the future, how you're going to feel in it, what you're going to look like in your dress. What are you going to say when you meet that person? And just taking that same principle and applying it to your dream zone or dream future would get you there faster, wouldn't it? Oh, without question. Without question. I tested it actually. In one of the nonprofits that I had taken over as a CFO, they were in pretty bad states. The board was divided. They were literally, every single board meeting, there was a fight. Literally a fight. To the point where we had to implement some really rigorous things to turn it around. And every single board meeting, I would say for three or four years was bad. Finance committee meetings were bad. Then the CEO left. And I took over as the CEO and the CFO for one year while they were finding the new person. And at that time I said, let's try this, okay? So before the meeting, the board meeting and the finance committee meeting, I visualized very intently, visualized that everything was going great. They said, Raj, what a wonderful job you did. Wow, we were all in red for these years. You have put us in black and this and that. And finally at the end of that, they were like, whoa, 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 clapping. And I just made it so real. Eric, from that day till the time I was in the nonprofit, we never had a fight. Every single time I was appreciated. Every single time they said, Raj, what a wonderful job you did. To the point that they gave me an award called the Angel Award for creating a change in the organization. So is it real? Well, I have had experienced it. So my answer is absolutely it is. But you have to know it is real. And what is real is different for everyone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It is real is different for everyone. Yeah, no, absolutely. So it, do you have like a process or any advice that you would give to entrepreneurs, solopreneurs who are, let's even look at coaches and consultants, you know, who may be stuck, who are in that five figure zone? What are kind of some of the things they can start doing now that, gets them to grow into six, seven figures. Absolutely. One of the things is to take a look at and see what exactly you are working on right now. First thing is to get clarity. Absolutely. With my guidance to wealth program, I start with clarity. So same thing, I'm going to use it here. Clarity is with your finances. When I work with people, are you clear on where you are? Do you know what your net worth is? And most of the people don't. They have, might have a rough idea, but they don't. And many times they are scared, fear. How bad would it be? My question is, it doesn't matter where you are. You need that step where you can step up from. So wherever you are in your coaching business, in your entrepreneurship, in your small business, whatever, see where you are exactly right now. Make it crystal clear where you are. Then, as I said, create where you want to be, where you want to go. And that is when you start shifting your mindset based on, I can't give you the whole aspect here, but the shifting of mindset is to Keep on thinking on a day-to-day -day basis that I'm reaching that level. I am being there. And this is what I want to create. Create that with full feelings. Mm. Feelings meaning to say you can start feeling as to what it is. I'm actually what, getting goosebumps right now, Raj. You probably can't see it on the <laughs> screen. but um, And I don't know why I keep bringing like the, the energy and source and God like just coming to my mind. So I'm just going to run with it. Um, most people, when you ask them, what do you want to create? They don't know. And the reason why you don't know is because you're trying to create something with the idea of what you've accomplished and who you are today. Correct. And you got to let that go. Like yes, who you are. Most people are basing it on their past. That's right. Who you are today is not going to be who you will be when you create what it is that you're thinking about creating. Correct. And the thing about it is like none of that matters. 
Like it's no different than somebody giving you a blank sheet of paper and saying, just, just draw it out, create it. What if it was real? Like put, take yourself out of it. What if it was real? What would you want to see for your life? What would you, regardless of where you are now, regardless of how much you're making, where you, where you've been and bring that creative source. There's a source that literally plants a seed in a woman and makes a life that grows <laughs> But bring bring that source into this creative process when you're thinking about it. just just think of that power that energy that anything in this world is possible yes before you design it and so okay sorry so yeah first I would say just take yourself out of it and whatever's happened in your life in the past does not really matter so you're saying get clarity yes and then once once you have the clarity then you visualize your future yeah as to what you want to make it now what is lacking in most people is the purpose. They're just looking for very few things, mm -hmm. meaning to say, I just want more money. The mind doesn't work that way. What is more? You get 10 cents more, that's more. Okay, <laughs> you, you need to start working on what you need exactly in your business. What level do you want to grow it? And one of the things which I tell many of my clients, really important is many times, and this may be something which I differ from other people, is in goal setting. In goal setting, many times they'll tell, shoot for the stars. Okay, big, think big, think big and everything. Many times people do that and they fail. Most of them fail. I'll tell you why. This is my perspective on it. Let's say you are making $40,000 a year. When somebody asks you, think big, what do you want? I want a billion dollars. Good goal. The problem with that happens is that your, that 1 million came from where? Well, that's an industry standard. Everybody says, become a millionaire. The problem is when you're making $40,000, your conscious mind, which can only comprehend three plus minus two words per minute, and then it is all your beliefs that sort of filter through it, tells you you're making $40,000. you are talking about one million? Boom, the idea goes out. And the fear comes in. How, how can I ever make a million when I'm making 40? Okay. My aspect always is, when you're making 40,000, can you think and your mind can comprehend 60,000? Oh, yeah. What about 80? That's possible, doable. Then aim for that. Once you get to that level, then aim for. So go in increments and your mind keeps on expanding. Now with me, I know once my business, when I was telling you I was at a job, crossed a million dollars, the mind expanded. Oh, making a million is an absolute possibility because you have seen it and, and, and it can comprehend it. So start with that. And, and again, everybody's at a different level and everybody minds works differently. Some people are able to pull it in very fast. Some people, it takes time, but you have to be in congruence because the world will give you everything you need, but you have to be ready to receive it. Mm. If your mindset is not there for money, then uh, even if you get those gains, those big windfalls, most people lose it very fast, very, very fast. And, and that is why many lottery winners that we have talked about, actually, this was a true thing. I was in one of the jobs in nonprofit in Washington, DC. I was coming back to this parking lot where I used to park my car. I saw this lady standing to my car and talking. She talking to, hope there's nobody in the car. <laughs> and then I went near and she just went away. And I asked that, and then he said, Raj, you don't understand. She has lost her mind. She won, I think, a few hundred thousand dollars two years ago. She was living a good life, like, okay, working every day. But she became sort of the queen of that place. And everybody was like, wow, you are this. And she started giving money, spending money, like there is a source where it is going to come from. And soon enough, she was completely out of it. And when she went back, Nobody was ready to give a penny back. She literally lost her mind. She was walking the streets and everything. So I saw that firsthand. And I know when you're not ready to receive it and you do, and you haven't conditioned your mind for it, it becomes really bad. Yeah, Jim Rohn used to say, you better become a millionaire before somebody gives you a million dollars. Exactly, he does. <laughs> Absolutely. Millionaire is a mindset. The money's not yes. going to make you a millionaire, right? Exactly. Okay, yes. got it. Yes. That's yes. really good. All right, Raj, well, how can people get a hold of you and, and check out your programs? Well, they can uh, email me. First is Raj, R-A-J, at rajkapoor.com 
rajkapoor.com or they can go on my website rajkapoor.com and they can book a free call with me uh, for 30 minutes talk about whatever you want to i'm not going to be selling anything there it is just if you want to talk about what you need it is just and many people are calling me by the way i've been talking to quite a few people uh, and they can reach out to me in either of those ways or on facebook i have few groups one group is for coaches and consultants called the millionaire path so if you search the millionaire path you'll get it uh, path like and, ath path yes path. okay yes ath and uh, i also run another one for non profits so if anybody is in non profits it's called non profit edge and that is where i have a lot of people from around the world who have gathered together in there and we talk about different things give them value i think that group has over 11000 people in there and uh, the other group i have just started growing so it's in the process of growth so uh, people can go and uh, take a look at me there but most of the things you will find on my website awesome raj it was such a pleasure to hang out with you today and and learn about the mindset i can talk about mindset all day long cuz this <laughs> has done such tremendous things in my life um i love it i see it and i hope you guys for all you listeners out there got something out of this episode if you did and it's on youtube leave a comment connect with raj connect with me and I want to thank you for listening to the show. Thanks for being here, Raj. Thank you, Eric. This was just a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.